You're watching The Breakfast Club. It's Power 1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. We got a special guest in the building with us this morning. Mr. Terrence Howard. Good morning, sir. What's up, Power Crowd? How's everything? <laughs> it's all great, man. How you doing? Everything is pretty good. We're a little sick up here. Yeah, but everybody's a little sick, but you got to let it run its course, man. It only attacks weak cells. Well, no, I think when Envy says sick, I think he means he's a little mentally sick. He's Shut up. No, so you mean sick in a good way. No, like, <laughs> like that's some sick. Mm. No, no, I'm talking about sick. <laughs> now, we got to talk about this new movie. Right Dead on. Man Down. Explain the movie. I seen the trailer, but I was confused. What were you confused about? I, I, I don't know who you are in the movie, see, because I seen a scene where Colin Farrell killed somebody in his room, and the lady said, I seen you kill this guy, that kill a guy that did this to my face. So you the guy that did it to her face. Nah, I'm, I'm confused. A, I'm a guy that's that's everyone in the movie. The movie is a, is based upon revenge, mm. okay, and the futility of of tracking or trying to seek out your own revenge. Mm -hmm. It stops you from being happy. Now there's a lot of violence associated with it because revenge is violence against your own soul. Right. So that's what the movie is more so saying. I mean, there's a lot of explosions, a lot of killing, yeah, but the moral story behind it. It's, it's something pretty big. It's something okay. that I think as human beings we really need to examine right now, especially mm -hmm. within the black and urban community because revenge seems to be a hot topic on our part. Oh, good, yes. good thing. What do you think about revenge? We're talking to Terrence Howard. Well, I mean, we have a limited vantage point. We don't know why people do what they do, and we don't know what God has in store. Mm -hmm. You know, he sees things from a more uh, a more vantage vantageful mm -hmm. perspective. So if we look at it from God's perspective and we wait on it, most of the time, things turn out all right. Cause what about your good. perspective? Somebody does you dirty. Terrence oh, Howard, man, have, you, have you ever gotten revenge on anyone? I believe in karma, so I know what you're saying. And I'm definitely going to see the movie ASAP as soon as it comes out because it looks very action-packed. Mm -hmm. And I like to watch movies about revenge and action and... Mm -hmm. I like to watch violence on TV. I know this movie originally, they said they hadn't marketed it right away when they were supposed to because of the whole Sandy Hook um, school shooting. I read that somewhere. Yeah, that I, mean, I mean, gun violence is a big issue right now mm -hmm. because oftentimes people are afraid that someone's going to take the law into their own hands. Right. right. But with regard to this movie, you got to remember, it's still a little bit of, it's it's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of action. It's, it's American television. It's mm -hmm. American film. But re with regard to revenge, you know, we, we know we don't benefit. Anytime we've acted out revenge, we still go and have to say sorry afterwards. Right. So I've had to learn the hard way. You know, <laughs> You've made some God mistakes yeah, in the everybody past. Everybody make the mistakes right. and you learn from it. And instead of them becoming stumbling blocks for the next person, they become stepping stones when you look at it from a more mature perspective. I always say I learn the most of my mistakes than anything. You just can't keep doing them over and over again. Right. That's what I always now, say. Now, which wasn't a mistake was tongue kissing Oprah. Well... Um, being able to be close to a, the queen <laughs> of the world, you know, to treat her like a woman and right. not treat her like the queen. How did that feel? Break that down. You <laughs> with Oprah, and I want to quote you right in those tick old bitties. bitties. Well, no, and that, that quote right there, that was me <laughs> speaking from the perspective of the character that Lee created. Lee wanted to create this dynamic archetype of, of just masculinity mm -hmm. apart from any education, apart from any any type of um, motivation beyond just being beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, tick old bitties, you know, that's something that Howard would say. Right. But like when I describe Oprah, I mean, she is a very sensual woman. That's why she's reached that place. Mm -hmm. Very smart and intelligent woman, but for her to allow you in, mm -hmm. to look her in the eye, to mm -hmm. kiss her, to mm -hmm. um, to touch her hand, to feel her uh, her femininity. Right. She ain't let you all the way in, but you know, explain no, that love scene I, a little I don't bit. Know. I, Did I, you, Terrence, Terrence you Howard is getting movie. all hot and you bothered here talking about <laughs> Oprah. Okay. <laughs> that just yeah, got see very that. intense. You, that's the butler. Though. I feel like We're he has an erection. Dead man down, right? <laughs> I, I'm just curious. Did you throw the snake on Oprah's leg? I'm just curious. Did you have an erection when all this was going down with Oprah? My heart was definitely erect. How did Oprah feel like when she heard that? She probably called you like. Terrence, I didn't know you felt this way. Terrence got oh, Oprah no, moist. No, no, no. <laughs> Oprah knows That'd be the a good character. Look. She knows the character, but um, there's always been this this romance between her and I. <laughs> In a sense, when you know you admire someone mm -hmm. and they want to pick you up, like Oprah years ago told me, she said, you are a young king and you are a young prince and one day you shall become king and your crown is right there. Just pick it up and put it on. 
You know, that's the relationship I have with my baby. Sounds like a metaphor <laughs> for her. Baby. Sounds like a metaphor for a condom, crown. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to take it there. You are sick today. But if you, you are, no, are but sick. if it ever happens, I don't think you should put that crown on. No, Definitely not. Definitely. You should, you should that shoot that club on. all the way up and pregnant <laughs> Oprah if you can. No, I think that, I think, um, Stemming. I, I hope to be, be Oprah's people for a long time. Right. Now, you've had a very interesting life because it feels like, to me, after reading up on you, you, you're the type of man you've been destined to do what you do because from what I've read that you you got discovered on the street well, by a casting In a director. sense, my brother was discovered on the street, but I'm the one that followed through with it. Mm -hmm. Same thing, I went to school for chemical engineering and became an actor, but now I have a diamond company where we grow diamonds called Sio mm -hmm. that's going to replace the silicone and computers and it's gonna replace all gemstones. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, yeah, you're destined to do what you want to do when you know what you want to do and you know who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's the main thing about being being black, being Latino, being being urban. It's remembering that our creative genius comes from our our audacity of being who we are and believing it. You have to be the most beautiful person in the world to you mm -hmm. or no one else will understand why you consider beauty beautiful. Mm -hmm. You so, got that, Yee? Yeah. That, that means light skin is back. We coming back on your ass. Light that, skin is back. That's Dark right. skin is black. Toothless is back. Toothless. Anything, Toothless is back. As long as you are a human being <laughs> and know your sexiness, man. Your sexiness don't come from this genetic coincidence of symmetry. Your sexiness comes from your spirit. And that spirit is what Oprah has. That spirit is what Colin shows in this movie. Mm -hmm. That spirit is what Lee Daniels does. That spirit mm -hmm. is what Hugh Jackman does. I'm doing a film now called Prisoner, where Hugh Jackman, you think of, you know, this this mighty, mighty man as, as, as uh, what's the character he plays in, in, in X-Men? Wolverine. Wolverine. Mm -hmm. You think he's this monster of a man, and he's so beautiful. Every week, on every Friday, he brings 200 lottery tickets and pass them out to mm -hmm. all of the crew, extras and everybody. Right. Nice. You know, because he knows how good it feels to want and to hope. And everyone scratches those things, and sometimes people win. Wow. And if they win, he should be like, that was my ticket, actually. I didn't mean to Yeah, I want that money now. If it's a big one. <laughs> now, Iron Man, you uh, recently said that Iron Man tried to, to destroy your career. No, they didn't try to destroy their, my career. I think what Iron Man did, they made a very wise and smart move. They Meaning? wanted to make Robert Downey the the face of Iron Man, as they did. War Machine was supposed to take over it. So when they made the choice to go with Don Cheeto so that they can promote Iron Man and, and Robert Downey, you know, that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't play second fiddle. That's not my dance. Mm -hmm. You know, I want it to be War Machine and have my own franchise. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we all are supposed to do. You can never stay, you can't take the vertebrae out of your back just to fit inside of someone's ceiling. Mm -hmm. You have to stand up full and proud, stand up erect. You know what I mean? Erect. He said erect again. De definitely yeah. said erect. Now, <laughs> now with that, uh, do you think that they didn't do that because of, of what reason? I mean, the first thing a black person will say because I was black. That's no. the first thing they're no, going to say. No, it's money. money. It's a money thing. They, they, they say they paid you a lot of money. You got to pay more than everybody. You know, you can't believe everything people say. Mm -hmm. oh. I say that all you the know. time. Yeah, Emmy gets paid more than everyone, so... Okay. Amen. <laughs> but, you know, you get... If, that, if I did do Iron Man and stayed in it, I wouldn't have my diamond company. So, mm -hmm. you know, I would trade that a thousand times over. Mm -hmm. You now know you what I mean? Mm -hmm. I also read an interview where you said there were par par parts of your life that were very... You got you started getting cast as a villain because you felt like in your life you were being portrayed kind of as a, a bad person. Well, no. I, what I think about playing the part of a villain, you really don't understand the good side of you until you've explored the darker side of your nature. Mm -hmm. You know, by playing villains, I can see what I would do in certain circumstances because no actor really is acting. You know, oh, that, that character has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Anthony Hopkins, there is a Hannibal Lecter inside of Anthony Hopkins, mm -hmm. or he could never explore it. Mm -hmm. There's a Michael Corleone inside of Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. But as a result of that, you get to juxtapose it to who you are or who you want to be. You know, the bad characters I've played reflect some of the bad things that occurred with me, and it's been kind of a cathartic and therapeutic for me to walk through those lifestyles and then to come out on the other side, because as an actor, there's no consequence right. to your action. Mm -hmm. So you get to explore humanity to the full. And I think we, maybe we need to do that within the urban community and stop some of this 
on street violence and explore it in the theater and explore it in the music and, and explore it in our artistry and maybe we'll find a better way of expressing ourselves. It sounds it sounds amazing if we could get it done, but there's too many knuckleheads out there. No, you and not too many people speaking for the knuckleheads. You know what I mean? Just stand up. Stand yeah. up. Example example means more than anything else. I agree. Sometimes I just say they do a role and they get so caught up in the role they start acting like that in their real life and it really affects. Has that ever happened to you? Yeah. Um, Quentin from The Best Man, that, that character stayed with me for a while. Aren't you doing part two for that? Yeah, we start doing that um, next month. I actually really like that character from The Best Man. I do because he was an honest person. And he Quentin, was hilarious. Yeah, but Quentin still had abandonment issues from his mother dying when he was young. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us in the in the in the inner city deal with even if our mother and father aren't dead, they're not there often because they're trying to make that money, mm -hmm. and we blame them for some of our um, emotional deficiencies. But everyone else in the community, like big brothers and big sisters, right. have to take up that role. Now, now, do you blame that? Like you've been divorced three times. Yeah. Do you blame that on your relationships? No, that's been me, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm the I'm the captain of my ship. So why divorce three so many times? Is, well, actually, is, you got divorced and remarried. Well, you got to remember, well, I've been divorced from from one woman twice. Okay. Mm -hmm. My first wife. Mm -hmm. um, what we, happened with that? You said, okay, we, we can make this happen again, and then you said, ah, F this, I'm out of here. Well, no, you try it, but, um, like, you see two roses that's growing. Right. And oftentimes, in the bloom of youth, they're growing in the same direction, but as they blossom they blossom in different directions. Mm -hmm. And you still have the camaraderie and the love between you, you have three kids, but now you're better off as friends, mm -hmm. you know? And like with my second wife, you know, we've been able to rekindle and we're beautiful, yeah. Mm -hmm. So your second you wife, you back good with your second wife? Yeah. Wow. You, you guys had some drama. I remember reading about no, that. No, everybody has a little drama. That's Jeez. why it's called life. That makes me scared. No, I'm not going to lie. The drama that people go through after they get married, those things make me scared. No, but get... you've seen the drama in your own household. You <sighs> see it with your best friends. You see it with your brother and sister. But it's just the determination not to let go. Now, wait, wait, wait. Now, which one is the second wife? Andy? Isn't the second wife the one you... Is that the one that said something about babies? That's not the second wife. No, nah, that's not the second which wife. Which one was that? <laughs> Who said Baby. Who said that? You told me a story about somebody. No, said, that's that stuff that they put in the press. So that that's wasn't. That's not got, true either. That's the stuff you've got to watch. See, that's why press. you got to clear this stuff up. You've got to watch the stuff that they put out there. Right. You know, because they're just trying to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I think family court, there's a problem with our family court because family court should remain private Absolutely. for the family. I mean, criminal court should be open to the public, but family court needs to remain private because you go to a judge to resolve a family issue, not to make it a public matter. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That doesn't have to be anybody else's business. No, because it family gets in business. the way of bringing the family back together, and that's the main goal. Keep the family as a whole. Okay. So you did get divorced but now to your second wife, and now you guys No, we aren't. didn't get divorced. We filed for divorce. You but filed for divorce. We're considering reconciliation the way every married couple should. That's you great. Know, we're having counseling, and we can see, we're seeing if we can work it out. See, you don't get too many people that are say that. And that's what I respect. That is great. Because you know, when people F up or they make mistakes, they, you always hear what they did, and then you hear the, the nastiness. You never hear that they're trying to make up, that they're going through counseling. I, res I respect you for that. Envy's going through some things I'm right definitely now. going through <laughs> some going stuff through some right things now. He's going through some things right now, his wife. So, hey, look, you, know. <laughs> you don't let And go. whatever I got to do to make sure my wife <laughs> is good, I'm going to do. Like the scripture says, what God is yoked together, let no man... Pull apart. There you go. You think you're difficult to be married to? Of course. I've got a lot of women that want my attention, you know, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that that pull me away from the house. You consider Harry Belafonte, you know, and how much he loved his wife and his kids, but he was so instrumental in the civil rights movement, which a lot of people aren't even aware of, that his kids really didn't know him, and he thought that he did a disservice to his children, mm -hmm. but he did what Nelson Mandela did. Nelson could have gotten out during those 27 years, any time he wanted. And he allowed his children to be raised without a father in order for the country of South Africa and the world to be raised by a man. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those sacrifices, what I've done as an actor, I think is a great benefit, mm -hmm. you know? I've opened the way for a lot of young men that will come behind me and young women that will come behind me. You keep pushing. And I hope that they follow the same thing I've done with regard to my science. You make sure you have someplace else to go, but you got to let go of the revenge. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to remember everybody is truly brothers and sisters. You let go of the revenge, and there's no way if my right hand or left hand offended me, I would take a knife and try and cut it off. Right. I would try and heal my hand. And once we recognize the convergence and consolidated nature of humanity, you know, then then the world will change. 
What is your relationship like with your parents? Oh, my father is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I dream about my mother every night. Okay. You know, my father just spent the last three days with, last two weeks with me and my son in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Now he's meeting his great grandchild for the That's first right. time. That's right. You just became a grandfather recently. I'm a granddaddy. <laughs> wow, granddaddy Terrence. <laughs> and your, your daughter got married at 18? She got married 17? at 19. Oh, 19, okay. Yeah. Wow. To a kid that I've known my entire life. I've known him since he was eight years old. Mm. Such a beautiful, beautiful, strong young man That's dope. that I trust, you That's know, dope. and I'm so happy to call him son. That's dope. Now, Jamie Foxx, you guys still beefing or is that over? No. You don't <laughs> want to Jamie, I made a mistake with Jamie. I, uh, I commented <laughs> on his album, mm -hmm. which I shouldn't have. I should have spoke to him personally right. about that. You said his album was trash or something no, like that. No, no, no. I said I, would, I wish I could have, I would have loved to have seen more of Jamie in his album mm -hmm. because I know Jamie as an incredible musician and an incredible writer right. but that was a private conversation I should have had with him and I deserve the things that he said about me mm -hmm. because I had no business speaking about a fellow black man a fellow artist mm -hmm. a fellow friend mm -hmm. you know so you know I let that go mm -hmm. I hope Jamie will always be my man I'm hoping that me and him might do a film together later Wow, you changed, Terrence. I'm, I'm happy for you. <laughs> and you, you have definitely changed. I'm and a granddaddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to, because now you got kids, kids watching what you're yeah. doing and every move that you make. They watch you, and they don't want to see a hypocrite. Right. You know? Now, Absolutely. you're also doing this Macbeth movie? Well, we may do Macbeth, but right now I've got, I just finished a film with Robert Redford um, called The Company You Keep. I've just finished doing a film with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and David Ayers. We just had Arnold Schwarzenegger up here. Yeah, he was just up here, the governor. That's a bad boy. Yeah. That's a bad boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, uh, never mind. What? <laughs> what? 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 He made me uncomfortable. Well, with all Why? the Secret Service people around. The Terminator? Yeah, I don't know, you know, I don't know. You got to play him in chess. Yeah? You got you to gotta sit him down and play some chess with him. Yeah? Envy, do you know how to play chess? Absolutely. Okay. Now, you know what? I also read something online, and I just got to clear it up. You might say it's fake, that you like dark sex. What's dark sex? That's what, that's what I wanted to know. I wanted to know what dark sex... Do I like sex... it in the dark? No, no. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> he likes the lights on. <laughs> but somebody said, I, I guess somebody was speaking out, I guess it was uh, uh, maybe somebody you dealt with said he liked dark sex. Well, I would love to have a conversation with them and... Um... Re remind me of that dark sex. Because I, I wanted think, to try I what, what dark sex was. I think what Envy means, and some <laughs> people look you, at this as, as <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Not with you, but. Okay, really, Envy? Forget it. Go ahead, um, yeah, nah, just threw me off. no such thing as dark sex. I mean, the making love, that, mm -hmm. that secrecy, there's no way two people can get closer in, in life, mm -hmm. physically, than, than that love making. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's a carnal act from mm -hmm. the start. Mm -hmm. It's a man penetrating a woman. Mm -hmm. That's a carnal thing. Sometimes like a dog, you know? So that's very it's, well, everything all right, yeah. is carnal. Okay, everything is carnal. All right, but you yeah. gotta what? love that. You gotta love that. That's the only way human beings come on this planet mm -hmm. is through is through sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. So you've got you've got to keep it keep it holy. And mm -hmm. plus, I think a lot of uh, people are into that now. After reading Fifty Shades of Grey, I see people are trying all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think when Envy said Dark says he's probably thinking about like whips and chains and no, choking I don't and in all any of, that. of that. Like I don't want somebody scratching me. I don't want nobody biting me. What and about I, role playing? I play enough roles on. on, on so TV. in bed, you gotta just be yourself. Uh, yeah, I want. Nobody's I want. ever said, "Can you come to bed as a pimp from?" No, no, no. With that trick. That'd now the be best funny. thing about being married, you know, you get to explore, you get to explore life through, you know, in, in a good way, right. you know, in a safe way. Envy does role playing, right? I, I don't. I, I'm just. I, I'm, some days I'm Barack do, Obama. Yeah. Yes. Some days I'm a police officer. Yes. That'd be fun. Some days I'm a criminal. Yes. So what? Sometimes don't judge you could be like somebody breaking into the house. That's you right. Know? You just got to be the man. You know, and the woman has to be the woman. That's when it's beautiful. That's Sometimes right. Envy likes to be the woman. I didn't say that. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's yeah, a you lie. You got to correct that. That's man. a lie. That, that. That's a lie. She's slandering somebody. She's got a fever right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Envy yeah. likes to get penetrated. Shut. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's, that's when we bad. stop, Terrence. Well, we appreciate bad, you stopping in. Definitely go see the movie. <laughs> Dead, Dead Man, Man Down. Down. Definitely Action check packed. it out. It's about revenge. And we, um, we love that you're coming through. Any, oh, any album? You doing another album or you're done with the album? Well, no, no, no. Um, I'm, I'm working on some new music now, mm -hmm. but we've got to change our understanding of music. 440 is wrong mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a key tone. Mm -hmm. We need to get to 432. Mm -hmm. Y'all will understand that later. 
Okay. Yeah, and we just said, mm hmm. I like, just said, I have no idea what he's talking about. Yeah, I, I, hopefully that your kids would be like, no, Dad. Jimi Hendrix tuned his guitar to 432 for a reason. Okay. And the Beatles made that adjustment after they went to India mm -hmm. and did all their music in 432 instead of 440. Look it up. Okay. All Got right. it. Terrence Howard, ladies and gentlemen, it's The Breakfast Club on Power 1051. Hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club, every weekday morning. Tune in.